Hi guys, today we're going to be doing this logo animation thing I created for Mad Resolve. It can be used for any text. So long as you get the process for doing it, it's a uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Just want to show you how I did it. And um, hope you enjoyed it as much as I did creating it. Let's get to it. Let's bring in a fusion comp. Let's go to effects, fusion comp bring that in. Let's right click on this, change clip duration, let's change that to 10 seconds. I'm just going to type 10 and change. Put the playhead on it, then click on the fusion icon to go to the fusion page. Let's move the media out here. Let's bring in the S polygon node, shift spacebar S polygon. Now let's drag this polygon tool to the viewer. We have a single viewer here, you can't toggle between the dual viewer mode or the single viewer mode, but we are going to use the single viewer mode here. I want to create a perfect circle. So I make sure the polygon is selected and it is what is in the viewer, see up here. So I'm going to right click on here, go to S polygon polyline, go down to create and click on ellipse. Now I want the size to be 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 for the height and width. Okay, now we have the circle and let's bring in Shift spacebar, bring in extrude, extrude 3D, drag that to the viewer. You have that in 3D space. You can hold down the left mouse button and the middle mouse button and drag to the right to zoom in. Let's click on this to show it in with some 3D shaders, right? Now let's go to extrude 3D, click on custom, click on here, drag it up here, click here and drag this end down here. I need to straighten this, like so. Now let's go here. This one here, I'm going to drag this here, like that. And click on this one, drag this here, like that. And then select both of these and press F on the keyboard. And drag the handles to the corner here. Handle of this to the corner here. Like so. Okay. Now let's go to subdivisions. Let's just make it 10. Doesn't have to be so much. Then the depth 0.025, a bevel width 0.0025. So we have something peel shaped. We can rotate around it by holding down middle mouse button and the right mouse button. Cool. So now we bring in a text 3D, drag that to here. Let's type M. Let's bring in a merge 3D node, connect extra 3D to it and the text 3D to it. And let's drag that to the viewer. We see the M is pretty big. Now let's format the text a little bit. Let's change the font of the text to null shock. I kind of like this font. Let's change the color to red, vibrant red. And let's reduce the size a whole lot. Maybe 0 0.12 is fine. Now let's, let's drag that up there. Now I want this M to be at the back of this pill. This is the front of the pill. So I'm just going to hold down the middle mouse button and the right mouse button to rotate to see the back of the pill. Like so. And then I, let's just pull it down. It's kind of too small. Let's do it by 1.5 is fine. And um, here we go. Now let's extrude this a bit. 0 0.01 for the extrusion depth. And then the width, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, let me see, 0 0.1 is fine, okay, 0 0.1 is fine. So we have this sticking out just a little bit. Let's go to the transform tab. Let's just give it a minus, minus 0 0.01 is fine. Let's rotate and see how we fare. Let's click out so we see whether it sits, so it sits perfectly on there. So now we've been done with this, but I want this text, if, if you looked at the animation at the beginning, this thing rotated here. So this text needs to be upside down. So I'm gonna to go to the text, the same transform, go to the X value and make it 180. And let's position it back to the center there. So we have it positioned Perfectly cool. Now we have to do that for M, A, and D. Instead of recreating this, I'm just going to copy this. 
and paste it twice. Right click, paste, right click, paste. Now I'm going to connect this, the extrude to each of the merge nodes I just pasted. Now, if we drag this to the viewer, we see we have the same M again, but we need to click on the text 3D and type A. And for this one, type D. So we have M, A, and D. The next thing we need to create is to create these in sequence. So I'm going to go bring in three transform 3D nodes. Click outside there, shift transform 3D. Where are ya? Okay. Just copy. Click on here, paste. Click on here and paste. And there's select that connect all of them now we have let's now bring in a merge 3d connect all these to a merge 3d bring that to the viewer i want to space them out so i'm just going to go here x value let's see to cheat four we need to rotate this view back to the front like so so then click on here, 224 plus 224 is 448. So this is 0 0.448. So we have them equally spaced. So I need to create a plane that has a cutout of this. I'm going to bring in shift spacebar, S duplicate node. I'm going to connect this polygon to it. After this one, I'm going to bring in an S Boolean node. Drag that here. Then what to connect to this, I'm going to bring in an S shift space bar S rectangle node. Then after this, I'm going to bring in an S transform node. All of them are shape nodes. So I'm just going to connect this to this green input. But I want this to be the green one and this one to be the orange. So I'm going to click on this shift space bar swap inputs. Then I click, I drag this to the viewer. This happens because the operation is intersection. So while the S boolean is selected, I'm going to go to inspector and click on here and click subtract. So we have one of the holes subtracted. Let's move this down. Let's copy this extrude. Copy and um, paste. Connect that up. Now this transform, now I'm going to use that to increase the size. So I want to increase the X and Y size, but I want them to increase it, increase them in the same proportions. I'm going to right click on this, click on expression and connect the Y to the X size. I can increase the size of this. And we're good to go. Now this duplicate, the reason why I put it here is because you, you'll notice that for here, I have three pills, so to speak. So I need to create three copies of that circle. So if I go to this extrude now, I want to create three holes. So I'm just going to go here. I'm just going to add two more copies to it. And then the X offset, let's move it by 0 0.224. And then that we have the hole but we now need to move them to be at the right position. Because if we now bring in a merge 3D node and connect this up to here and connect that up to there, they kind of fit, but they are not at the position where I'd like them to be. So I'm just gonna move this and like so. So let's check it out so it's centered. So I'm just gonna move this so it's centered on the image. And tada, we have the whole cut out. And they all sit perfectly here, covered. So if I go here and I decide to rotate this, bam, fantastic stuff. You realize that when I rotate this, it's not exactly at the right place. Not exactly there. So I'm going to go double click on this, just go to the pivot. For the x value, I'm just going to set it to minus 0 0.2. And um, for the y value, I'm going to set it to 0 0.014. You can see 5. 
and then let's set the z to 0.014 so let's see if you rotate it now let's see if it rotates at the right point not exactly so i'm going to have to set this manually so let's move this down like so so if we rotate this down, does it rotate at the right point? So it fits perfectly. Rotate it. So we need to move the Z just a wee bit in. So like so. So it fits the stop perfectly. It's one form. It's sign. And now we have that. I'm going to make sure I set the pivot for all the other points for this transform. So I'm just going to, let's say I delete this transform and just copy this transform here. Copy, then click on here and paste that transform. Sorry, Control V. Let's delete this one so I don't have to redo the whole setting again. Control V. I just need to move this 0 0.2 to 4. One four four eight. So we have all of them sitting there. So we have them sitting there. Now we can for each of them we can rotate them like so. And we are back to where we were before we started. Okay. So that's the whole idea for this thing. So I'm just gonna go here, double click to set this back to zero. So they are at the back there. Now let's rotate in. So let's move into, let's move into, let's say frame 20. Keyframe, let's start with this one. Click on this keyframe it. Let's go to frame one, two, see 30. 30 frames after that. Keyframe this. And then set this to 180. And I'll go to the spline editor. Go to X rotation, click zoom to fit, select one point, and let's do this a bit. I want to drag this up just a little bit, so it's like so. Let's see how this looks. That's it. But I want the other one to be looked that same way, so I'm just going to go here, drag this down a whole lot more too. So if we go here, we have exactly, that's what I'm looking for. All right, guys, so we have that animation there. I don't want to recreate all these across these two transforms. So I'm going to delete these two transforms again. <laughs> I'm going to click on here, just copy this, click here, Ctrl V, paste it, click here, Ctrl V, paste it, and just move this to two, two, four. Click on this, move it. For eight. Okay. So I click select all three of them, go to keyframes, zoom to fit, expand all three, then I stagger the animation. Let's say I move this forward. I move this one forward like so. So if we play this back, we have it's kind of too far apart. So I'm just gonna move them closer to each other like so so we have them moving in like, like that beautiful looking good right yeah so let's move on now so i'm going to bring in the render 3d node and connect that here drag that to the viewer so i'm going to bring i'm going to go here and bring in a transform 3d transform 3d then i'm going to zoom these all in Let's move this to the side a bit. Let's zoom this in a bit more, like so. Like so, pull that here. Now you'll see the reason why I have this transform here. So I can increase this. Now I can increase this so it fits the screen. And now we have this animation. But now this, if I play it back, Let's go to Renderer 3D. Let's change this to Hardware Renderer. If we play this back, you can't see the shading. Let's just bring in a directional light. Shoot space bar, directional light.
I'm just going to connect this here and go to render a 3D enable lights and shadows. Now this directional light, let's go to transform for the X value. Let's set this to 45. Let's go to direction, directional light, go to controls, go to shadows. Let's just make it slightly faded. We're good here. We have the animation. That's what we're working with. And ta-da, this is it. And the intensity of the light, I don't want it to be so much. So I'll reduce it just a little bit. So we have this going. And um, let's now go to the text. I want to do a little thing. Let's go to shading. Perfect intensity, let's pick this five. So the shine comes out. Specular intensity for this one to let's make it five. Then for this one, go to shading, specular intensity, make it five. So guys, just a few adjustments here and we have the animation. Simple stuff. And um, let's connect it to media out. And if you go to the edit page, this should actually play easily. This, I didn't have to do any frame, any refresh print cache or something like that, it just works. So it's not system intensive at all. That's the beauty of this whole thing. Beautiful stuff in it. I hope you had learned one or two things on this one. I had fun on this one. And uh, see you on the next one. Cheers.